Well, hello, my friends. Today, I want to talk to you all about wells that are below the surface, right? So today, I had a house from 1968 and got called out to take a look at the well equipment. Just kind of let them know, like, hey, what are we working with? This is an older house. It, it's an estate sale. The parents passed away. The kids had no idea what's going on. So they had me come out, take a look at it. So we find the well tank. All that stuff looks good. Everything's running the way it's supposed to run. But we run into something. The well's buried. What does that mean? What can happen with the well that's buried? Should we leave it buried? Let's get into it. So generally, uh, with older homes, you're going to come across some some goofy stuff, right? In our area, 1968, usually you would have the drilled well accessible at the surface. <clears throat> you wouldn't have to worry about a well pit or anything that's subsurface. That's usually something you would see between 1930 and 1950 in this area. But sometimes, just like this, that's how it ends up working out. So this particular property had their well pit just below the patio in their front yard. Not that big of a deal, but you know, we needed to ask them, where's the stupid thing at before we could find it. So we get the papers up, we find the lid, open the lid, and we see that the well's in the pit about three feet below the surface. So why is that a bad idea? What, what should it look like? Uh, a standard well should be sat up above the surface and at least eight inches in a non-floodplain 24 in a, in a current floodplain with basic uh, code that we have nowadays. But you don't always get that, right? Sometimes they're a little bit lower, sometimes a little bit higher. Just say somebody smacks it with a mower, you cut it down, and most people don't really get that fussy about it. But should it look like that? No. So with this one, it's below the surface in the well pit. The main concern is that that pit could fill with water, right? So if you have it below the surface, especially in the front patio area, if you get a heavy rain, you know, you could have all that water coming off the roof going into it. You could have the water from the driveway going into it. Then you run the you run the risk of having all that water get into the well. Now there is a lid, right? And this lid is supposedly watertight. It's one of the old school, I always call them the moon pie style lids. It's where you got two plates that squish uh, the rubber gasket together and that creates the seal on the inside of the, of the casing. So that style usually will create a good, a good seal so that way stuff doesn't get into it. But by putting it below the surface, you do run the risk of water getting in. Additionally, by keeping a steel casing in a hole that is dark with no air circulation and is damp, you're just asking for that metal to rot away. And then eventually you're gonna get pinhole leaks, right? Like we've already discussed previously, pinhole leaks do happen on steel casing all the time. Is it the biggest issue? No, you just dig down around, cut it off, put a new piece of casing on there and you're good to go. But if it's below the patio, how often are you actually opening that, right? And that's where we run into some of our concerns. By having a patio with a paver structure, yes, it's easy enough to open it up, but as a homeowner, are you really gonna do that? No. So what we're gonna recommend is we're gonna recommend that they extend the casing out of the hole. They already plan to redo the patio anyway, so it really doesn't matter. But they should, they should bring it up and put something else around it, whether it be a fake wishing well, or maybe they build up like a birdbath style thing out of stone or pavers or whatever. But they wanna get it out of the hole. So we know we have issues that potentially could be coming in with the groundwater. We also have an issue where the casing itself could decay. But the big thing is by burying it like that, now you just made whoever's gotta replace that pump or do any kind of maintenance, you just made their life a lot harder, right? And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna charge you for that. So th they had a giant, you know, four foot by four foot square she piece of sheet metal above this pit. That's pretty big. It's a lot of pavers that you have to move. And uh, you gotta dig all that up, pull that off just to even start to fix whatever's going on because of that, you're gonna end up paying more. So in my opinion, it's a waste of money to have to do something like that, right? So well pits are the most common, uh, but back in the day, you would have the same concept or the same style of well, they would just actually physically fill in the hole. And then, you know, whatever's there is there. That is the most common old school style, right? Um, this was kind of like that weird transitioning transitionary period from hand dug wells to modern drilled wells where people were still kind of doing the same same process like the lids that people would put on a hand dug well are the same lids that they would put on these well pits it's just rather than having a 40 foot hole straight down you're gonna have a really smaller hole about six inches a couple hundred feet or basically 100 foot most jet pumps can't go super deep and most of these systems were done on jet pumps so now you gotta worry about ruining the casing. You gotta worry about groundwater 
and now you're gonna have a more expensive repair, right? So what do you do? In this circumstance, what we would recommend is you have the well driller, whoever's a licensed well driller, come in, dig all that stuff up, install a pitless adapter, get the casing up above the surface, and you should be in pretty good shape. If they don't do anything about it, is it the end of the world? Probably not, right? What are the odds of their bacteria being in there? Pretty high, but you know, people get lucky. Sometimes they don't have any bacteria. All that said, when when people make the codes, like when the county actually makes the codes, there, there's a reason for it. They're not just picking an arbitrary number or saying like, hey, we don't want this to look this way. No, they've done the research. They found that by having a certain height, certain depth, certain size, certain type of material, you're able to get a more consistent product or you're able to have a higher likelihood of not dealing with problems such as bacteria getting into your well, right? Sure, was it perfectly fine back in the day for them to do that? Yep. But it was also perfectly fine just to have a sewage pipe right into a creek. We still don't let that happen now, do we, right? So they're gonna eventually go ahead and bring this up, but I just want to bring to all of y'all's attention that this is something that does happen, right? You do see old homes that look like this. Maybe you have an old home with a, a, bell, a well that's buried in a well pit. Same recommendation I would give to you. Bring that thing up because you run the risk of ex more expenses, more deterioration, and you got groundwater getting into your well that could potentially create some contamination. It's not fun, it's not something good, right? If you found value in this, or if, if you like this kind of style of content, uh, please hit that like button and subscribe. I have more videos posted every day on the world of well and septic. Till next time, guys.